Okay, let's uh, get started. Okay, um, so um, you see, um, we actually have like a, a, a class of over 80 students, but now like, uh, you know, yeah, this classroom is still too big, right? Yeah. Yeah, but it's okay, I mean, as I say, like, uh, I, I don't take attendance, okay? So, uh, and we record the sessions. Um, in case if you want to study at home, that, that's totally fine. But, um, um, of course, like, uh, coming to class also has the benefit. I mean, if you have any question, you can ask me directly, okay? So, um... Last week, okay, we um, talked about a basic concept about uh, Bayesian inference. Basically, like, uh, 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 is to use the evidence to change your belief, okay? So, uh, but uh, um, of course, last week, we, we only vaguely talked about this concept, okay, uh, but uh, I mean, it's obviously, you know, um, very intuitive, right? But uh, we need to um, pin down this mushi um, concept, okay, into like a mathematical form, okay? And uh, um, to do that, of course, we need to have a little bit of mathematics but not too much, and all this mathematics uh, that we talk about today, I mean, you should have learned that from your high school anyway, okay? I mean, you, 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 you learn high school like a probability, right? Like uh, those uh, stuff like a uh, long time ago, so I suppose like uh, you shouldn't have problem with that, okay? So that's, um, okay, um, as I said, okay, the Bayesian inference is, uh, I mean, putting this in a simple term, is to reallocation of credibility across possibilities. Okay, so for example, on a typical day at your location, okay, what is the probability that it is crowded? Okay, it's cloudy. I mean, for example, like uh, like today, I think it's cloudy, right? So, um, I think in uh, here, okay, in Zhongli, okay, um, we probably have like a, you know, higher than 0 0.5 chance, I mean, to have cloudy days, okay? I mean, this is actually better than uh, my hometown, okay? I, I grew up in Kilong, okay, which is known to be like a, uh, Reading City, right? So, uh, like when I was like a kid, okay, um, Kilong was uh, a terrible, like, uh, like a, um, you, you probably go through like uh, weeks and every day it's raining, okay, every day for, for like, a, I mean, a week long or even like more than a couple of weeks. So, Kilong is much terrible, but uh, I think Taoyuan is probably close to 0 0.5. Okay, so um, suppose you are told it's raining. Now, what is the probability that it's clouded? I mean, if it's raining, most likely, okay, maybe more than 90% it is clouded. Without a cloud, you, there, there's no raining, right? So pretty much like, uh, you know, the probability of cloudy is sh it should be much lower than the probability of uh, cloudy on the condition of raining, 
You guys know this uh, notation, right? This is a conditional probability, right? Okay, so um, of course there's th the reason I say like it's ninety is a zero point nine or ninety percent is because there are still some occasions like uh, you see like uh, y you have rain but uh, it's it's sunny day so it's um, I, I don't know the English term for that like but uh, you guys get the idea I mean in Chinese it's called like uh, what's that. Um, What's the Chinese term for that? I, I don't I don't remember that either. But anyway, like uh, sometimes when it's sunny, you still have rain. Okay, but that's not very likely. Okay, it's a very I mean uh, rare occasion anyway. Okay, so so this is exactly what we are looking for, right? That's reallocation of credibility across possibilities. Okay, so. Um, Suppose instead you are told that everyone outside is wearing sunglasses. Then, uh, well, um, it's n not very likely you see people wearing sunglasses like uh, in, a, in a cloudy day, right? I mean, unless that guy is uh, blind, right? I mean, but uh, I mean, uh, let's see, the chance you, you, you bump into a blind people, okay, is not very high anyway, right? So, uh, again, okay, the, the probability of cloudy should be much larger than the probability of cloudy on the condition that you see, like, uh, everyone outside is wearing sunglasses. Again, this is a conditional probability. So you can see that, okay, um, another example of uh, Bayesian inference and uh, you can see um, when you put down those things into like a, like a probability uh, um, you know then you, you, you know like this has connection uh, to the conditional probability okay so base rule Okay, which you should have learned that from high school probability, but uh, probably you don't feel it's like uh, that important. Okay, when when you learn that, okay, in high school, okay, but uh, it is an important uh, mathematic, to, to, I mean, tool. Okay, it's merely the mathematical relation between the prior location of credibility and the posterior location of credibility conditional on data. So here, okay, let me explain. The P crowded is the situation you, uh, without any data, right? When you don't have an, any input, okay, the probability of, of crowded is your prior, is your prior. And then you receive some data, okay, for example, in this uh, situation maybe you see like uh, it's raining or you see like a situation like uh, uh, people outside is I mean they are wearing sunglasses okay so these are the input you receive okay or you can say they are data that you observe okay and uh, once you have this data okay uh, that will change your probability, right? So this, like a uh, conditional probability, okay, either the, in the first case or in the second case, are what we call posterior, okay, posterior, okay? So you can see that, okay, the prior uh, allocation of credibility, which is this one, and the posterior pro reallocation of credibility, okay, is this one, okay. They are different because of the data, right? So that's exactly what we are talking about, the Bayesian inference. So, um, so we need to, you know, uh, you know, bring you guys back to some basics of uh, statistics. 
okay, because probability and statistics are kind of like, uh, you know, intertwined together anyway, okay? So what is statistics? Okay, basically it's uh, the collecting, organizing, analyzing, and the interpreting data. As I said, remember I told you last week, like uh, the de like, uh, Department of Statistics, they, they consider themselves like uh, the Department of Data Science, okay? This is, um, you know, rightfully so, okay? Because you can see statistics is to dealing with data, okay, anyway. So there are two main statistical methods, okay, um, that are used in data analysis. The first one is what called exploratory data analysis, EDA. So normally, okay, it's, um, yeah, this is the tool that uh, help, uh, help us to do certain summary of the data, okay? Um, for example, like a mean, mode, standard deviation, the interquartile range, okay? So all this, okay, um, when you are given a set of data, you can compute and obtain some number out of this data. And uh, obviously they are a summary of this set of data, okay? So EDA is also about visually inspecting the data using the tools you may be already familiar with. Okay, for example, histogram, histograms and the scatter plots. I mean, because uh, after all, I, I, I'm not, uh, you know, um, checking high school uh, uh, textbook for, for quite a long time, but I'm, I'm pretty sure like in high school textbook, they, I mean, I mean, you probably learn histogram scatter plots and from the high school, right? Okay. Okay. So, so this is like uh, the first type of uh, statistical method that, I mean, you can use for uh, data analysis, okay? The second type of data analysis is about making statements beyond the current data, which is called inferential statistics, okay? So, um, um, for example, okay, we may want to understand a particular phenomenon, okay, maybe we want to make predictions, okay, for future, okay, uh, uh, um, or need to choose among several competing explanations for certain observation, okay? So the inferential statistics, okay, is the set of the tool, okay, that you will uh, learn in this class, okay? Um, they are, of course, like a traditional uh, 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 inferential statistics and uh, the Bayesian one, okay, and uh, we, of course, in this class, we are focusing on the Bayesian inference, okay? And the statistic approach, okay, is a better approach because, okay, it's ontological, okay, and it's technical, okay? So, um, actually, uh, um, um, to be honest, like, uh, um, you probably cannot say like uh, uh, deep learning is statistical approach, but because it's, uh, it's, it's complicated, okay, too, too, too complicated. But uh, um, I, I, you could probably, you can, you can, you can rightfully say like uh, machine learning methods, a lot of machine learning methods, okay, um, you know, if you try to, you know, uh, look at them, okay, uh, from a statistics point of view, okay, they are kind of very similar, okay. And um, so statistics actually is like, a, you know, a mathematical framework that can be used, okay, for all these uh, different inferential 
uh, um, methods that you have learned from machine learning, actually. Okay, so this is like a very powerful tool, statistics. Okay, and also it's technical. Okay, um, um, in the sense that okay, um, there are some model software tools. Okay, such as PyMC3. Okay, so we can uh, use utilize these tools to define and uh, to solve the model. Okay, very easily. Okay. So, um, of course, I mean, uh, this, this chapter, we are st uh, still not going to talk about PyMC3 in detail, but uh, we will uh, talk about that, I mean, very quickly, okay? So, so you don't, okay, in the past, without this tool, okay, um, it required a very high level of mathematical uh, um, you know, understanding, okay, or I mean, or even like a, it's it's impo near impossible to do certain inference based on the data. But nowadays, okay, uh, uh, because of the availability of these tools, and uh, obviously because of the computer, we are able to do that. Okay, I I I think I, I hopefully I'll talk about that today. Okay, why I mean. Uh, computer and the software becomes so important in Bayesian inference. Okay, so after we talk about the the method, okay, of course we need to also talk about the data. Okay, so data is uh, is a, I mean the most important ingredient. Okay, ingredient in statistics and the data science, obviously. Okay, and uh, we know that. Data actually come from many many different sources. Okay, uh, for example, uh, uh, you can collect data from experiments. Okay, or you can get data from the computer simulations, or you can do some surveys to collect data, or few field observations. Okay, some data, okay, may uh, 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 be collected. Uh, very inexpensively, okay? For example, if you are doing surveys, okay, a lot of time doing surveys are uh, very uh, normally uh, inexpensive, okay? But uh, uh, computer simulations, okay, uh, um, well, as long as uh, your simulation tool is not so huge, okay, uh, uh, the, 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 current, the, the, the current computer like uh, uh, um, speed, okay, normally, okay, allows you to collect a large amount of data, okay, uh, uh, inexpensively, okay. However, okay, there are a lot of experiments, okay, or field observations that can be very expensive, okay, um, um, because, you know, some physical or chemical experiments, okay, it requires a lot of like uh, uh, investment to do even one experiment, okay? And uh, uh, if you, if you tell like uh, um, a lot of time, like uh, we we people, I mean, in computer science, okay, when we are doing inference, we are really not those people who collect the data, okay? I mean, a lot of time when you are, you know. Analyzing the data, you 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 actually only obtain the data from somebody else, okay? Who already, you know, did some experiments or you know to collect those data for you, okay? But uh, but uh, really, like uh, um, a lot of like this uh, data collection process, it could be very expensive, okay? Or field observations. Think about that. I mean, some. Data may be like, a, for example, medical data. Okay, uh, you want to see like a lot of um, like a, like a rare disease data set. Okay, but the real disease because it's real. I mean, it's real disease because uh, you don't get to see so many patients with that uh, symptom, right? So if you want to collect a lot of data on that real disease, that's also very challenging. Okay. So um, there's a whole branch of statistics, 
okay, to talk about how to do data collection, okay, um, this is known to be experimental design, okay. But uh, yeah, we we are not uh, going to talk about this field, okay, because as I said, okay, in this class, we assume, okay, we already have the data, okay. We are not, uh, uh, you know, uh, um, going to talk about how do we, you know, uh, um, make sure the data collection is done correctly. This this part is not, uh, but if you are interested, there are other, you know, uh, literature you can check out, okay, in the experimental design. But, uh, um, and also, this is an example to tell you, like, uh, some experiment could be very expensive. For, for example, a uh, large hadron collider, LHC, do you know this thing? Okay, in Chinese, okay. Um, this thing, okay, I mean, it's a, this facility actually takes years to construct. And uh, each time you do this experiment, okay, of course you can receive like uh, hundreds of terabytes data. But, um, well, uh, 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 this uh, experiment equipment is just very, very expensive, okay. Um, uh, uh, um, I mean, like, uh, like uh, there are only a few this type of uh, facility, and each facility is the size of uh, pretty much a city, okay, and uh, to operate these uh, um, experiments, okay, you need like um, thousands of engineers, okay, to do that. So this is like uh, so complicated, and obviously the data is also so expensive, okay. And uh, this is important, okay, you need to understand, okay, even though we, uh, as I said, we are not going to deal with data collection, but uh, you need to uh, uh, understand as a general rule, okay, the data collection, okay, the process of, gener of generating the data as stochastic, what is stochastic? Stochastic is probabilistic, okay? If you don't know this term, okay, it is pretty much similar to probabilistic, okay? So, um, because um, they are, they, there's ontological, technical, <laughs> or epistemic un uncertainty, okay? So, uh, for example, when you collect the data, okay, um, you know, sometimes you cannot take into account of all the factors that, you know, affect the data collection, okay? You, you cannot, uh, um, you know, I mean, even with a very, very controlled experiment, there are still certain, like, uh, like uh, um, uh, factors that you cannot uh, fully control. Okay, and this, and also like, uh, um, um, you know, um, a lot of time, like when you measure the result, okay, you collect, okay, uh, from the experiment, okay, the measurement itself is also not so accurate, okay. After all, it's, I mean, you know, it is not you know, generated uh, from computer. I mean, for computer simulations, yes, you may be able to get a, ma a much more accurate uh, 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 measurement. But uh, um, yeah, I mean, in computer simulation, it is a you know, simplified model, okay, when you simulate certain events anyway. So it is, again, okay, uh, uh, not so um, accurate. So, so the system is intrinsically stochastic, okay? So there are technical issues, okay, that will add noise 
or restrict us from measuring with uh, arbitrary precision. Okay, and there's there are conceptual limitations. Okay, I mean for data collection. Okay, so because of that, okay, we consider data to be stochastic. Okay, there are uncertainties. Okay, for data, even though we are given, we are not dealing with data collection, but uh, even though we are given the data, you need to understand data is stochastic. Data are stochastic. Okay, we we always need to interpret data in the context of models. Okay, including mental and the formal ones. Okay, so data does not speak but through models. And uh, some of you may have questions like, uh, okay, so, so, I mean, in this class, we are talking about models. Um, so what exactly are models, okay? Models normally means uh, um, a sp specific, um, you know, assumption, okay? And uh, that assumption comes with some parameters. Okay, let me use, uh, 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 yeah, we, we are going to talk about that, I mean, quickly. I mean, uh, for example, like a uh, 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 standard deviation. Okay, a standard deviation has some parameters, right? Its mean is standard, uh, sorry, the, the normal distribution. Normal distribution has uh, some parameters. Okay, for example, the, the mean and the standard deviation, right? So basically, like, uh, you know, then no distribution with mean and uh, standard deviation can be considered as a model. Okay, so anything that comes with certain parameter that you can adjust, it's a model. Okay. So in this class, we assume we already have the uh, uh, the data that is that are already collected for us. Okay, and our data will also be clean and tidy. Okay, something re really true in real world. Okay, uh, actually, I mean, uh, um, uh, because you know, I, 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 I'm doing some projects. Okay, uh, 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 you know, um, even for data you, you, you obtain from the government. Okay. They are missing values, okay. They are missing values, and uh, a lot of missing values. That that you you will you will doubt that like uh, those government employees. I mean, are they are they doing their job or they are just drinking coffee every day? You know, so I mean, uh, it's really a lot of time. You feel like uh, the quality uh, of some data. I mean, offered by the government is is really unacceptable. Okay, uh, um, I'm talking about you know uh, um, uh, I don't know if you guys are I mean are familiar with this uh, website. It's called Minzhen Gong Gong Wu Lian Wang. Okay, Minzhen Gong Gong Wu Lian Wang. You can you can do a search of this term. Okay, and. Uh, this is, uh, I believe, it's a uh, it's a government run, like a uh, like a uh, like a uh, uh, data portal that allows you to download, for example, like a PN two point five uh, uh, readings of uh, of a different area. Okay, and uh, for example, like a uh, water resources, and a lot of like a uh, like a uh, like uh, um, uh, open data. Okay, but. Uh, you will find that the data offered by by the government, the quality is so is is so lame. Okay, um, so as I said, okay, in real world, in the real world, okay, the data is never clean, never tidy. Okay, but uh, anyway, okay, in this class, let's not worry about that. Okay, let's not worry about data collection. Let's not worry about uh, data cleansing. Okay, data cleansing by itself is also um, important research. Okay, including like uh, um, 
uh, data imputation, including like uh, like uh, you know, um, you know, getting rid of the outliers of the data. Okay, but uh, let's assume the data that we have at hand are already you know, good. Okay. And also we need to talk about sample space. So what is sample space? I mean, because after all, we are talking about st statistics, right? So the sample space is a set of possible outcomes. This, is, this will map into this. Remember, I told you possibilities are outcomes. Right, a set of outcomes, right? So normally this possibility, okay, a I mean, uh, close possibility, these possibilities, okay, is, I mean, they, it can be considered as our simple space. Okay, so for example, when you flip a coin, okay, the simple space is head and tail, okay? I know some people, when they flip the coin, the coin stands, right, on the edge, okay? That's a very rare case. That's, n that's not uh, uh, considered that you know, very rare case anyway, okay? So when you flip a coin, you can only get like a head or a tail, okay? And uh, uh, if you throw a dice, okay, there are six possible outcomes, right? One to six, okay? So basically, okay, so if the coin is fair, when the probability of coming up heads, okay, will be 0 0.5, okay? We normally denote, okay, the probability of a certain event as theta, okay? But, uh, okay, this, so this theta is already a probability of coming up ahead, okay? But, uh, but uh, we consider this probability of coming up ahead is 0 0.5, this whole sentence, okay, um, as, a, as a theta. So degree of belief about parameter is denoted as p of theta. Okay, so this is um, you. You may wonder, like, uh, what's the difference between this one and uh, what's the difference between theta and the p theta? The theta is the uh, I mean, refer is referred to the probability of coming up heads for a coin. It's a it's a it's a you can say it's a parameter, okay? You can say it's a parameter, okay? And uh, um, degree of belief is like, uh, you know, how much you believe this, uh, this, this, this probability is true, okay? So for example, we might have believe that, okay, the coin is fair, okay? When I say the coin is fair, I, I mean theta equals to 0 0.5, right? The probability of this is 0 0.99, okay? Uh, if the coin was minted by the federal government, well, I mean, because you get this coin directly from um, the, the government, and, uh, um, well, there's no particular reason to consider this coin is, you know, um, there's any problem, I mean, when you flip this coin, okay? Okay? So you can say, okay, you, you, you pretty believe, you pretty much believe, okay, this coin is fair, okay? Or put it another way, okay, how much do you believe your government, okay? I mean, some people think, okay, I, I trust my government only up to like uh, 90%. Some people think, okay, I trust my government to 99%. Some people say, okay, I, you know, I, 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 you know, I love my country, okay? 
I consider the coin fair. If I get this coin directly from government, I will treat it as fair coin. I will consider it 0 0.999. Okay, very 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 positive. Okay, so so this is like a, a belief. It could be different. Okay, from person to person. Okay, because it's a belief. Okay. So both probability of head or tail outcome and the degree of belief in biases refer to sample spaces. Okay? And uh, but uh, these two things, these two things are different, okay, in statistics because probability of head in coin flips, this thing is outside the head. What do we mean? Okay, it means it can be sampled. Okay, I mean, if sampled, this, key, this word is, is not uh, uh, familiar with you, I mean, familiar to you, I mean, uh, uh, um, you can say this type of thing can be experimented. Okay, you can flip this coin any number of times, and you can see if this coin is fair. Okay. So, so this is like a, a um, you know something you can do. But the the belief, okay, when I say I believe this coin is fair, okay, I have you no know, or put it another way, like uh, okay, this uh, uh, where is it? Okay, p equal to P of theta equal to 0 0.5 is 0 0.99, okay? This belief, okay, is inside the head, so it cannot be sampled because even different people may have different belief, right? So because it's inside the head, so how can you sample it, right? Okay, however, the mathematical properties of probabilities are the same in their essentials. Okay, here I just want to tell you, okay, the first thing, the first type, actually, the first type of uh, understanding to probability is exactly what I told you last week, the frequentist understanding of probability. Okay, the event can be sampled and based on the, the result of the samples, large amount of samples, you get the probability distribution, okay? But some, some events cannot be sampled. Remember I told you like an election example? Okay, here, okay, we are talking about another example. They just cannot be sampled. It, it's, a, it's, 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 it's more like a belief, okay? It's more like a belief, okay? Here, okay, the reason I, we talk about this is because we are talking about reallocation credibility, right? So this credibility, if you remember in the in last week lecture, we talked about credibility is equivalent to uh, you know probability, and uh, um, I told you um, you know belief. Okay, belief is also referring to probability. So these three terms, okay, belief, credibility, probabilities, are pretty much the same in this class. Okay, so so here we talk about this just one because we just want to I just want you guys to understand this credibility concept. So, for example, um, as I said, like uh, uh, um, um, you can approximate the probability that a coin for a coin flips. Okay, that I mean the probability that the coin like a, like a, like a flipping coin I mean come up with head. Okay, by by doing a lot of like uh, experiments. Okay, you can approximate that probability. Okay, but uh, you know, even if you do that, even if we take a frequentist approach, 
Well, even for a fair coin, okay, it seems so obvious that we should get about 50% heads in any long sequence of flips. But uh, if you try to really flip the coin, okay, you will see that this is the probability, uh, uh, you know, of the head, of the head, okay, uh, with the number of flips. Obviously, when the flip number is small, okay, the probability can be, you know, um, uh, can fluctuate a lot, okay. But we even if you flip like a four, you know, you no know, two hundred times or even 500 times. You see, okay, even if this coin is very, very uh, fair, to be honest, uh, we get this not through the real experiment. We get it through computer simulation. So we can really set the, 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 the generation of the head or a tail to be pure random, okay? Just 0 0.5, okay, because it's computer generated. But even with that, you can see that, okay, it's not exactly 0 0.5, right? The proportion of heads is just near 0 0.5, but not necessarily exactly equal to 0 0.5. Even with a very long sequence of the experiment. Of course, here we are doing computer simulations. But you get the idea, okay? So, the, there's a limitation for this frequentist, uh, um, you know, uh, approach. Okay, this is another limitation. Okay, because you can never get the, like uh, the exact 0 0.5, like uh, like uh, the proportion of heads is never exactly 0 0.5. Okay, just just very no difficult to get that. So. Of course, okay, if we know this, uh, uh, um, this coin is fair, okay, we can derive, okay, we can derive the, the, the probability, you know, directly, okay, because simple space of the coin, you know, will be, you know, head and tail, okay, so by the assumption of fairness, so we know that each outcome is equally likely. And we know like a probability, okay, for head and tail together should be one, right? Because that consists of the whole sample space, okay? So, um, so the long run relative frequency of heads should be exactly, you know, 0 0.5. But this is not done by the experiment. This is done by derivation, okay? And this... Uh, idea, okay, okay, the, the, you know, derivation can be extended to other simple situations. For example, like a fair dice, okay, uh, for fair dice, like uh, each side have a uh, one over six uh, probability to come out, okay, to come up. I mean, uh, you can, you can, the, the, the derivation is pretty much the same. Okay. So, so let's come back to talk about this uh, belief, because belief is subjective. I mean, well, as I say, like uh, different people, different person has different belief. So obviously, belief is subjective, right? So, so how strongly do you believe that a coin minted by the US government is fair? I mean, as I say, like, different people have different belief in their government. I, I, I'm pretty sure like uh, the people who voted for Donald Trump will be, will have different belief like, uh, you know, to their government, right? Than those who voted for uh, Joe Biden, right? I mean, yeah, let's not use like a uh, Taiwan ex uh, uh, politics as an example too much, okay? U using U.S. as an example probably is more, much more fair, okay? Much more e m like uh, political correctness, okay? So how about a coin purchased at a magic shop? Obviously, if you, if, if you see somebody come out from a magic shop with a coin, you probably don't believe that coin is fair, right? Okay. 
So to specify our subject we believe, we have to specify how likely we think each possible outcome is. Okay. So, but this is, uh, as I say, it's a mushy into intuitive belief. Okay. So how do we pin down this intuitive uh, mushy intuitive belief? Okay. Um, this pin down process basically is uh, calibration. Okay, we want to calibrate the subjective beliefs. Okay, and uh, the interesting thing, well, yeah. So the interesting thing is that we can, you know, for example, okay, uh, let me, let's use an uh, example, okay. How strongly do you believe that there will be a snowstorm that closes the interstate highways near Indianapolis next New Year Day? Uh, because you guys are, we, we are in Taiwan, right? So we don't have snow, okay? Um, like, a, like a, I mean, even if we are strike, uh, I mean, I mean, I mean uh, we, we, we are, no, we, we experience like a very cold weather, like, a, you know, some people even like, a, you know, drive like a long, long way to, to the mountain to see snow. But uh, in, in US, okay, this is like, a, you know, a lot in a lot of area in U.S. like uh, snow is really a terrible thing. Okay, um, 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 this this some of these slides. By the way, I mean, I, I first I, I want to tell you some of these slides because I remember I told you I used to use the book do Bayesian data analysis. Okay, as a as a textbook. So some of those uh, slides actually uh, are still from the previous, uh, the, the, from the, 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 the courses that I used to use that textbook. So some of the, the some, for example, the slide, this slide is from that textbook. And uh, it, it happens that the author of that textbook is a professor at the Indiana University. Okay, uh, Indiana University, Bloomington. And uh, if you don't know, I got my master from that school, okay? So I, I, I stayed in Indiana um, for two years, okay? Um, um, so I have a very close connection to Indianapolis, okay? Indianapolis is, uh, is the biggest city in, the, in Indiana, okay? Which is about like a 50 minutes drive, 50 minutes uh, away from Bloomington, okay? IU Bloomington, okay? So anyway, Okay, um, uh, I can from my 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 own experience. I can tell you that you know, like a, like a uh, New Year Day. Okay, like uh, in New, I, I mean every New Year Day, like uh, the, the the interstate highway near in the in the Apples, Okay, it's very likely to have snow. But uh, you know, in North part of US, even when they have snow, they will, it's, they will you know, uh, um, put the salt, salt on the road, okay, to make sure the snow will melt, okay? So a lot of time, even when it is snow, okay, the, the interstate highway will still be operating, okay? Still be operational, okay? Um, the the chance for the highway to be to be closed, okay, it is only when two occasions. The first occasion is when the snow is really heavy, okay, it's really heavy. It's too heavy that the salt cannot melt the snow fast enough, okay. It's, it's, it's possible, okay, it's possible. And the second possibility is that, okay, when there's a freezing rain, you may say, well, if it's rain, then why do you need to be afraid of the rain? But uh, it is, um, the freezing rain is more terrible than the snow, okay, because 
it is supposed to be rain, but because the, the, the ground temperature is too low, when it, the, the, the rain you know, you know, uh, come near the ground, okay, it is frozen into ice. Okay, so, so when there's a freezing rain, okay, a lot of time, the road will suddenly become very, very slippery. Okay, very, very slippery. So it's very dangerous. It's very dangerous. Okay, uh, and because, it, 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 you know, it becomes ice. You know, I mean, even before, it, you know, it arrived the, 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 the road. So the, 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 the salt doesn't work so well with the, I mean, for the icy, the, the, the icy rain. Okay, so, so this is the second occasion, like, uh, um, um, you know, the, the interstate highway will be closed. Okay, so, but anyway, okay, if you ask me, I would say that I, I will have a, a, a good share of belief, okay, uh, next New Year Day, okay, uh, the interstate highway near Interpolis will be closed. For example, like the uh, probability for that, maybe, maybe 50%, 0.5, okay? So, but the issue is, this is a belief, right? As, I say, as, as we just discussed, we cannot, we need to calibrate this, this belief, right? Okay, so, um, so how do we calibrate this belief? Like, because I have a strong belief, but how strong is it? Previously, I told you 50%, okay? But uh, a lot of time, when you think of this, uh, uh, even if you don't under understand, okay, uh, you, if you don't know about India, please, you may have a certain belief, right? But if I ask you, what's your probability? You probably cannot tell me, right? You cannot tell me your, your probability. I mean, for this belief, right? So, okay, you can try to do this experiment. In the sack, in the sack we put 10 marbles, five red and five white. We shake the sack and then draw a marble at random. The probability of getting a red marble obviously is 0 0.5, right? This is high school, well, to be honest, like a high school, like probability class, I mean, everybody know that. I mean, this is probably the simplest uh, question that you can get from high school anyway, okay? So, so now let's, let's consider this. Set one, okay, gamble, okay, because, you know, we, in Taiwan, people like gamble, right? Okay, actually, like, a, the, the, this is a human nature, okay? So everybody like gamble, I probably should say that, okay? So gamble A is you get $100. Let's, uh, let's continue, okay? Um, so um, my office uh, is listed as B213, okay, on the syllabus. However, okay, I am never in my office, okay? So if you want to find me, okay, please go to my lab, okay? Which is 322, B322, okay? Don't come, don't go to my lab to find me, okay? Because I'm never there. You can only find my red wines, okay? I mean, that's my, 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 my office is my cellar, okay? Wine cellar, okay? So, so I, you know, uh, unfortunately, I'm, I'm not there, okay? And uh, um, same thing goes for my office phone number, okay? Uh, for formality reason, I have to list my office phone number here as well, but uh, please remember, if you want to find me, okay, my office, okay, uh, I, I'm really actually in my student's lab, and um, um, the phone that you could use to reach me is my lab, number, okay, um, which is listed, I mean, with the TA information, okay, so, um, but for formatic reason, I have to list my, you know, official office and phone number there, okay, just want you to be aware of that, okay, and um, 
So my own personal website is provided, but uh, one thing that is more important is the course website. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I forgot. I, I think I, I, I didn't update the, the link here, but uh, the course website is, is incorrect, okay? It should be EE class, okay? I will update this, okay? Uh, LMS was like, uh, uh, has been used by NCU a couple of years ago, but uh, I mean, we, we have switched to E class, I mean, you know, since then. So remember to log in to your E class um, to check out all the course information. It is very important that you log in to E class like um, maybe once, uh, uh, at, at least the, I mean, once a week to see any update. Uh, for this class, okay, because, uh, okay, so, because like, uh, I mean, um, today I actually uh, uh, print out the syllabus and uh, the first set of handout to you, okay, however, okay, uh, starting from the, like, the second lecture, all the I mean the updated syllabus, okay, and uh, the handout as well as homework labs will all be on the course website, uh, EE class course website. So this is important that you check EE class course website uh, regularly for any update, okay. And uh, um, the time place, I mean, uh, for this class is. Um, um, well, listed here, and uh, my office hour is Wednesday and Thursday from 4 to 5.30 p.m., okay? Um, if this time is not good for you, okay, you can always send me an email for appointment, or if you find me on, you know, anywhere in the lab, uh, in, 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 in the department, just uh, stop me for any for any question, okay? Okay. What's the problem? So, that's why it's broken, isn't it? I don't know. It's not broken. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. So, uh, yeah, the technical difficulties uh, has been resolved. So, let's uh, switch back to Okay, so I was uh, talking about uh, my office phone, my office hour here, okay. So if uh, this time is not work for you, okay, um, just uh, send me an email for appointment, okay, um, or just, just, just find me in the department. I, I, I consider myself like a very easy to to, to, I mean, I mean, um, um, myself like uh, stay in the in the department for quite a long period of time. So it it should be easy, very easy to find me or in my lab. Okay, um, but I, I still recommend you like uh, to to send me an email to to repeat or I, I can even explain like in in Chinese if needed. Okay. So okay. The description of this class, okay, um, this course provides a bridge uh, between undergraduate training and the uh, modern Bayesian methods for data analysis, okay, um, and uh, Bayesian data analysis is like, uh, um, you know, has been used, I mean, uh, extensively um, in the field of statistics, okay. Um, so um, uh, you could use it for um, um, like a regression, you could use it for classific cl classification, inference, okay? You can do all these things that, I mean, um, uh, you, you would think like uh, 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 what machine learning 
okay, can do for you. Okay, basically, I mean, uh, Bayesian data analysis can do um, those things as well. Okay, so, but what's the difference, I mean, uh, uh, between the Bayesian data analysis and the machine learning? Okay, I, I will talk about that, I mean, uh, later. Okay, I mean, after we, maybe a couple of lectures, get into like uh, this course, okay? Because right now, I mean, uh, if you don't have any concept about Bayesian data analysis, it's, it will be difficult for me to, to, to uh, talk about the difference, okay? And uh, um, the textbook we, we are using is uh, this one, okay? Uh, Osvaldo Martin, uh, Bayesian Analysis with Python, Introduction to Statistical Modeling and the Probabilistic Programming using uh, PyMC3 and the RVs, okay? Um, to be honest, I mean, there are many, uh, uh, oh, this one, uh, uh, be, be careful, okay? This is actually the second edition, okay, from this author, okay? Don't use the first edition, okay? The first edition is a, a little bit outdated. And the second version has uh, a lot of new material, okay? Um, the reason uh, for choosing this uh, textbook, okay, um, is primarily because, um, you know, there are many, many Bayesian data analysis books out there, to be honest with you, okay? Um, but as I said, okay, Bayesian data analysis, uh, to be honest, like, uh, is, um, is a very important field in statistics, okay? But not necessarily for computer scientists, okay? So you, if you check out like a Bayesian data analysis books, most of the books actually use R, okay, instead of Python, okay? I'm not saying R is, is bad, okay, subject, so, um, um, but, but once you want to use Python, okay, for this uh, subject, the choice of the textbook becomes very, very uh, uh, limited, okay? So, so this is perhaps like the best one I could find, okay? So, well, just to give you a little bit history of uh, why I choose this uh, textbook, okay? So, um, you could probably find this textbook somewhere on the internet. Which one? I don't, you know, I, I, I cannot give you uh, 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 the book, okay, but uh, uh, it is uh, published by uh, Packet Publishing, okay? Even if you want to buy the, um, uh, the book from the publisher, it's, honestly very inexpensive. It's about, I think like, uh, when they are running like a uh, 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 sale, okay, uh, each book is about maybe $5, okay, at most like $10, okay, even when they are not running the sales, okay. So <clears throat> this book is really, really inexpensive, okay. And um, so, um, well, um, this is another um, reason, okay, to pick up this book, okay. It's uh, relatively inexpensive, okay. So, so far so good, right? Any question? Okay. Then, okay, uh, lecture. We will, we will finish this chapter and then uh, hopefully like, uh, <coughs> talk a little bit about the uh, representation learning, okay? Um, and uh, uh, next lecture we are going to, going to talk about the, uh, the auto code, okay? Um, that's about it for this semester. Okay. Um, 
And uh, so the week after next is going to be the final exam. Okay. And uh, um, one thing to, uh, to tell you guys uh, is that, okay, the department actually has an announcement to make, okay, uh, um, and uh, they, because they want to reach as many uh, uh, vocational students as possible, and it took, uh, oh, oh, uh, this is not for you guys, okay, it's uh, for night class, okay, for night session, so never mind, okay, but, uh, okay, so the week after next, it's going to be the final exam, and uh, um, then uh, the third lecture, okay, from today, is going to be the project presentation, okay, for the final term project, and uh, for that day, okay, uh, um, the TA is going to, uh, you know, randomly decide an order, okay, for uh, your presentation. Okay, so uh, the TA will announce like uh, the order a week, at least a week prior to that day. Okay, and uh, uh, each presentation is going to take like uh, maybe because like uh, in the afternoon session it's going to be uh, um, quite quite a few uh, groups. So we will see like uh, you know each presentation. It's going to be maybe between 10 to 15 minutes, depending on you know how much you know, how how you know, I mean, we will decide about the length of the presentation, okay, and announce that maybe um, you know through the class and uh, uh, and during that day, okay, we will uh, uh, provide like a, a pizza. Okay, for you guys, okay, um, as uh, as usual, okay. So um, you guys are more than welcome to come a little bit early, like around 12, 30, okay, to enjoy the pizza, okay, before your presentation, okay. And uh, uh, some students asked me about the final exam. I mean, is it okay to bring like the one page cheat sheet, okay? Uh, yes, okay, you guys are allowed to bring one page paper, okay, cheat sheet, okay? Whatever you write, you wrote on that page, okay? I don't care, okay? But, uh, you know, uh, it's not going to be a whole book, okay? Just one page, okay? And uh, um, I think like uh, everything remains like that. Uh, I mean, remains the same, like uh, just like uh, uh, what we, you know, how I told this class last time. Okay, so uh, hopefully, like you guys um, have a better understanding. And already, by the way, I already had the simple final uploaded to the EE class. Okay, so just in case if you don't know the format of the final exam, please go check it out. Okay. Um, um, we normally provide like a, um, I mean a little bit more questions than uh, required, okay? Um, so that you can have a little bit of weak, uh, wiggly room, okay? Like uh, you know, you can drop like uh, one or two questions, like uh, you know, two two. In, I mean, in your final exam, okay, hopefully, I mean, this is going to help you to get a better grade, okay. So, okay, so back to our lecture, okay. So last time, we talked about the argument, right? And uh, um, we actually create a model that is uh, used to predict like uh, the time series data. Okay, originally we, we, we want to create. I mean, we want to predict like just one time step. Okay, but uh, later on we say okay now we want to predict like uh, you know, ten time steps. 
okay. Then, okay, uh, we found that if you apply like a, you know, the model that predict that like the next time step 10 times for those uh, 10, you know, additional time steps, uh, it's going to, the performance is going to be very poor because like uh, the error actually gets accumulated. So what we can do is that we can, um, um, you know, convert, uh, we change the model so that it predict like a, uh, I mean the next 10 time steps like, uh, you know, uh, uh, no, uh, 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 together, okay, just in one prediction. Uh, this way you avoid like, uh, you know, uh, the issue of like uh, uh, error accumulation, okay. So, um, yes. So the performance, okay, if you use that, uh, um, this model, yes, it's going to perform uh, uh, much better than, you know, using like uh, the original model to do like a prediction 10 times. Okay, but uh, actually, okay, you can even, you, you, can, you can actually like uh, convert, because the previous models that we talked about, okay, they are all like uh, uh, sequence to vector models, okay? So, so we can actually convert this uh, uh, sequence, to, I mean, our sequence to vector model into sequence to sequence model. So what is the difference, okay? In the sequence to sequence model, it's something like this, okay? Uh, you know, um, yeah. Instead of training the model to forecast the next 10 values only at the very last time step, okay, we actually, in the sequence to sequence, we train it to forecast the next 10 values at each and every time step. So it's going to be something like that, okay? You get the first 10 step, first 10 values, uh, and use that to predict the next uh, 10 values, and then, okay, you move one step ahead. Okay, so, so say that, like, uh, okay. Say so this is like a, okay, so this is the first 10. So you are going to, your model is going to use this first 10 values to predict the next 10 values, okay? And then, okay, your model is going to move one step, okay? So the next is going to be something like this. From the second element to the 11th, okay? So this is going to be the next sequence, okay? And then, well, the, the, the second next 10 uh, element. And you use that to predict, like, uh, you know, from here to one more element, okay, something like that. Okay, so you predict this, uh, you know, you, you use this to predict this one. And then you move one step and you predict next 10 and so on. Okay, so that's the idea, okay. So, so basically, okay, um, uh, the advantage of this technique, okay, the loss will contain a term for the output of the arm at each and every time step. Because now, okay, originally you use the whole sequence and then you only account for the last output, the, the loss, okay, only accounts for the last output, okay? But, uh, but now, because, okay, for every, like, uh, for example, from here, you predict the next time step, and you can use this to compare with the ground truth, well, um, for, the, uh, for the loss, and, uh, and, you, and you can use that, I mean, uh, to fix, to, to, I mean, to get the gradient, to fix your model, okay, to, to improve your model. So you get a, a lot of error gradient, okay, compared with the original approach, okay? So, yeah, 
So because you get a lot of gradient, I mean, uh, in flowing through the model, so this gradient will all stabilize and speed up training. So what do we do? Okay, the first thing we need to do, obviously, is to prepare our data uh, so that like uh, we take the first ten and then predict the next ten and so on. Okay, um, but actually, what we do is, uh, you know. Not exactly like this. We are going to create what we call a causal model. Okay, so it's not like a, we use first ten to predict the next ten. We are going to use the first ten to predict. Let um, me to predict like this from from first ten. This is the first ten. Okay. And then we want to predict here, from here to the, from the second element to the eleventh. So there's a, we only predict like a one additional element in this round. Okay, and then we move up from the second element to the eleventh. We predict like a, the the you know the third one to the the. the, the um, yeah, the third one to the, the twelfth element. So every round, we are we only predict one more. Okay, and the the, the reason this is called the causal model is because, because like uh, you can see, you know, uh, in this case, okay, because you use the the, the first ten the ten elements, and uh, you predict like uh, from the second element to the last one plus a new element. So some some part, some part, some part of the input somehow overlap with the output, right? So that that is why this is called the causal model. There's overlap between your uh, uh, x train and y train. X train is your input. Y train is your ground truth. Okay. So so what you need to do is here. Okay. You need to prepare your data accordingly. Okay, um, you have your X trend ready and you have your Y trend ready. Okay, and then after that, okay, you also need to change the model. Okay, um, remember now it's a sequence to sequence, right? So your input obviously is still, I mean, it's the same, it's just a sequence. Okay, but the output is going to be a sequence. So remember, like uh, originally, okay, these two lines remain the same. Okay, we have like a simple argument, okay, return sequence equal to true, okay, and uh, um, this part is the same. However, here, okay, originally we used like uh, just the dense uh, layer with 10 elements, right, with, with, sorry, with 10 neurons. But now, but now, okay, because we want to convert it into the sequence. So we can wrap this layer by the you know time distributed. Okay, so that we make the last um, we make the output a sequence as well. Okay, so this uh, uh, time distributed is going to convert the output into the shape of the sequence. Okay? So, you know, um, supposing if you use the dense layer and, uh, uh, you know, uh, and the training using like uh, the sequence to sequence, I mean, it, I mean it, it's supposed to work as well, okay? But, uh, you know, the reason to add the time distributed dense, okay, to come, to wrap this dense layer with the time distributed is to make it more verbose that you want this output to be sequence, which is a, a, a normally a better practice because like uh, uh, because dense I mean can be used for both for either like uh, the, the vector output or sequence output. But uh, I mean you know if, if you don't if you don't wrap it with the time distributed, you know we don't know what the uh, type of uh, model we are doing here. So it is uh, a better idea to make it 
more verbose, okay, make it like uh, uh, obvious. Okay, here we are dealing with uh, this uh, with a sequence to sequence model. Okay, and then okay, uh, there's one small tiny detail that we do need to be careful. Okay, uh, yeah, we train it like uh, everything uh, uh, I mean, looks just right, but there's one thing. Okay, uh, because now remember every time. We we I mean we, we, we use this ten the first ten and we get we predict the the, 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 like the, the next well the, the I mean one we, we, we the, the window that shoot like a one element we predict that and then okay and so on so but uh, yes I mean uh, this is uh, going to be used for training but uh, for evaluation I mean. Uh, when you when it comes to evaluating the model, the only thing that matters is the you know because eventually okay say we have like the first fifty, the first fifty, first fifty element. Obviously, with this shooting, you are able to do this uh, many many times. But the the thing that really matters is this next mm -hmm. ten values. This next ten value. I mean, we want to see the the error. How much error? This last ten, uh, the, 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 you know, the, the future ten, you know, uh, the overall, should you say that like, the fifty first to the sixties element. I mean, that you predicted. Like, uh, I mean, how far away they are from the ground truth. This is what we really care, right? The previous, I mean. Uh, then, yeah, we will use that for training, but we are not going to use that to for evaluation. But in in in, in, in during evaluation, what have, what what matter is is this is, is, uh, is the accuracy of the the fifty first to sixty. Okay, element. So 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 yeah, I mean you should you know define uh, a separate MSC that care only for the last time step okay um so you we define this okay this return chaos matrix uh, mean square error okay the last one okay and then uh, once you define this last time step msc i mean you can have your optimizer okay we, we use added here and then we compile our model which use the loss function MSE, optimizer, optimizer, okay? Metric, optimizer is a bad, okay? The metric is, I mean, is last time step MSE, okay? So these two are different. This one is to measure the performance of the model. This one is used during training, okay? You need to be very careful to understand the difference between these two, okay? So if you use this, um, uh, and the trellis model, the MSC you get is about 0 0.006, okay? Uh, the previous one gives you the MSC of like 0 0.008. So this one is 25% uh, is better than the previous model. The previous model is the sequence to vector. This one, sequence to sequence, I mean, give you even lower MSC. So this is a, a, a better approach, okay? 25% improvement is not uh, is significant, okay? So, so obviously, you can combine this approach with the first one, what do I mean, okay? Uh, for example, say you want to uh, uh, predict like a, a long-term uh, time series, say like, uh, okay, use the first 50 time steps to predict next, next, 50 time steps. Then what you do is that okay, you use the uh, you use this one to predict the next 10 value, and then use the, um, this uh, sequence to predict the next 10 time uh, uh, value and, and so on. So you, uh, you can apply this thing five times to predict like the uh, next 50 uh, uh, you know values. So 
sort of like combining the first approach and the second approach. So obviously, I mean, when you do that too much, okay, you still get like a error accumulation, right? So, so you know, when you you should be you should weigh like a, like weighing like a, you know, how much, how many, you know, uh, additional uh, 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 sequence you want to predict. I mean, each time. Okay. So for example. Okay, uh, if you use that, uh, the first 50 to predict the next 10, okay, that's reasonable, right? That's reasonable, okay? Because you should have uh, enough uh, information to predict the next 10. But uh, let me use a very, you know, uh, uh, you know um, extreme example. Okay, say you want to, you have the first 50, Value, and you want to predict like the time, the sequence of the next 100, 100 sequence. Uh, uh, then, okay, you, you can use the first 50 to predict next 10, and do it 10 times, right? Okay, so that's what we meant by combining these two approaches. Okay, then I mean because each time you get the 10 additional value and then you do it 10 times, you get the next 100 values, okay? But uh, how, if you say, oh, I, I don't like uh, error accumulation, let's do it in one prediction. So you use the first 50 to predict next 100 in one try. Probably that, that's not going to perform very well. Why? Think about that. You don't have uh, a lot of information to predict this law. Right in one prediction. Okay, so this is like a, you know, trade-off here. Okay, I mean obviously like a, I mean if you have a long sequence and you predict like a, um, uh, you know, shorter sequence, it will give you a much better, much much accurate prediction, and then you can tap on that uh, a more accurate model. I mean several times. Okay, to 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 form a longer prediction. Yes, but uh, on the other hand, okay, uh, if you use a shorter sequence and you expect to predict like a one long sequence in just using, I mean, just you want to train a model to do that. That model, you I mean, most likely will not perform very well. Okay, it's just because you don't have enough information. Okay, so this is like a. You know, you know, which, which this these two approach, yeah, I mean they can, can can be combined. As for like the how do you combine them? That's something you can think about. Actually, for the project three, okay, uh, you are required to predict like the next six uh, hour uh, uh, PN two point five, right? So say if you just use the previous three hours to predict next six hours. Well, most likely, it's, it's not going to perform very well. Okay, just want to give you an idea. You probably want to use a much longer sequence to do the prediction in order to make it like a, the next six hours prediction better, okay? So, also, okay, uh, when you forecast a series, okay, it is um, uh, useful to have uh, some error estimation, okay, I mean for your prediction, okay, uh, like the, you know, how, how accurate or how bad your prediction is, okay. So for this purpose, okay, the NC dropout is a good technique to apply, okay. We talk about NC dropout in chapter 11, okay, uh, two chapters, uh, I mean, Go okay. I mean, so so basically, you can add NC dropout layer, okay, with each memory cell, and uh, this will help you, you know, uh, to estimate uh, what we call error bound or like uh, you know, you know the the the, the variance, okay, of your prediction, so which will um, you know you get a mean and standard deviation, okay, which will will uh, help you to determine, okay, if your prediction 
uh, is trustworthy or not. Okay, I mean this is uh, important. I mean uh, for many crime series forecasts, for example, <laughs> like uh, if you want to predict like uh, the um, stock market trend, okay, because you are investing money on it, right? So obviously you want to make sure, okay, your prediction is uh, accurate enough, okay, so that your your money you invested is not going to be a waste, okay. So, okay, uh, at this point, okay, we finished like uh, uh, a lot of discussion, um, um, but uh, um, as I mentioned um, at the beginning of. Uh, this chapter, okay, um, they are, you know, the island has uh, some issues that uh, we need to deal with, okay, um, yeah. So, um, for example, when it comes to predicting the uh, forecasting time series or handling other kind of sequence. I mean, I mean, I mean, Arlen, I mean, is used for that purpose, but, uh, you know, they do not perform well on long time series or sequence. Why? Okay. So the first, to train on, on long sequence, okay, we must run it over many time steps, making the unrolled Arlen through time a very deep network. Here, when we say, uh, 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 deep network, I'm talking about here. Okay, we need to, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, unroll many, many steps. Okay, so when I say it's going to be a deep network, I'm not talking about the depths here, I'm talking about the depths. Horizontally, okay, because uh, yeah, you are going to expand your your island through many many time steps, okay, which will create some issue, okay, because the the, the depth is not this. It, there are two two depths that we are discussing here. The one of depth is the, the the number of layers, which is the same as like. A, the, 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 I mean, uh, as we discussed for the other networks such as CNN or MLP. But the other depths, these are uh, you know, unrolled through time. Okay, this is especially, I mean, the case for long sequence. Okay, and this type of thing, okay, only is, you know, this, this, this issue only happened in other Okay, you don't have that in CNN, you don't have that in MLP. Okay, so I just want you to be aware, okay, why training a long sequence, okay, uh, you, you encounter, I mean, issue, I mean, that, I mean, we, we need to explain, like, uh, we need to discuss, like, uh, here, like, uh, like, uh, like uh, you know, um, uh, I mean, different. So this uh okay. When it gets deeper, okay, even even though we are talking about you know the other dimension, I mean deep in other dimension, okay, yeah, the I mean the network, okay, the training of the network may suffer from unstable gradient problem. Okay, so it may take forever to train, or training may be unstable. Okay, another issue, okay. When an island processes a long sequence, it will gradually forget I mean, what you what we did it at an earlier sequence. Okay? So the first input in the sequence it will gradually be lost, okay, especially during the I mean the unroll through time process. So what do we do? Okay, so I mean let's talk about these two problems, okay, two issues. I mean, how do we solve that? Okay, the first issue, okay, unstable gradient problem. Okay, um, yeah, we talk about many 
ways to deal with that I mean, in, uh, especially in chapter 11, okay? So, for example, like uh, uh, um, good parameter initialization, remember the he initialization, or uh, uh, growth uh, uh, initialization, uh, all those uh, parameter initialization, or faster optimizers, we talk about uh, Adam, we talk about you know, Nathan, you know, all those optimizers, um, you know, or dropout. Okay, this, <coughs> okay, this, this, this um, actually still helps. They, they, are, they are still useful, they are still useful, okay. However, okay, one thing is slightly different. Non-saturation activation functions such as reroute, okay, may not help as much here, okay. Um, why is that? Okay. Um, they may actually lead the island to be even more unstable during training. Okay, because, I mean, when you're doing gradient descent update, okay, the weight, you know, the weight in a way that increase the output slightly at the first time step. Okay, um, well, here. Um, when you're doing the, the, the gradient up, update, okay, keep in mind, okay, I mean this this training, okay, for one for one uh, iteration, okay, this expansion, this expansion, or like I'm going through time, it's just one one iteration, right? So this this gradient flow back, okay. Even though we I show you, okay. They look like the, okay, you have this and this and this and this. They are different models, right? They look like a different model, but they actually, all this represent the same thing, right? All this represent the same thing. So when you are calculating the gradient, yeah, you are very calculating the gradient for this, but, the, but the actually this and this and this, they actually share the same weight because they are, they actually, are the same the same thing, right? Even though we are unrolled through time, but they, they represent the same same stuff here. So they use the same weight. All these weights are the same, and it's during one iteration. So so if um, your activation function result in slightly larger result, then those Larger result because you are using the exact same weight. That slightly, you know, uh, increased result is going to be a large and a large to a point that it explodes. Okay, so because this unrolls through time is special in in, in our, as I said, I mean, this is, you know, it, it's. This is not going to, we don't have that in CL, we don't have that in MLP. So in the MLP, okay, uh, uh, when you travel a layer, say, I mean, you, I mean, of course, I mean, CL or MLP, I mean, it's going to be like, a, you know, we, we don't have uh, a road through time. So actually, when you travel a layer, okay, something like this, they, of course, they, they represent different weights, right? Each layer has different weights. But now, okay, all this, have the same weight. So that's the, the primary difference. Okay, the primary difference. So, okay, the same weights are used at every time step. Okay, so the output at the second time step may also be slightly increased. And so, and at and, 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 and third step, and so, third time step, and so on. So. Eventually, okay, the output, until the output is broke. Okay, so, uh, so because, um, when we say non-saturated, I'm talking about, I mean, you know, you know reroutes like this, right? Right? So, so you, 
I mean, this, this, this value can go very, very, very big, right? This value can go very big. The, the, result, the result of the redo activation function can be very big, right? As you apply the redo, I mean, it could be very big. But the, on the other hand, the saturating activation function, okay, such as hypertension, okay, the value is the result is in between negative one to positive one, right? Okay, so it is bounded, right? Yeah, we have the the saturating function. The issue is like uh, the gradient is going to be to, to to be very small. Yeah, we have that issue as well. But uh, at least like uh, the output is not going to be no like unbounded. Okay, so so. So the saturating function, such as like uh, hypertension, okay, does not have that issue, does not have that risk, okay. So so um, so that is why, okay, the hypertension in the island is no reduced as the default, as the default, okay. I'm not saying real can never be used, but I'm just saying. I mean, uh, uh, in other Redo is uh, not as popular as hypertension. Okay, not as popular. Um, um, of course, you can say, oh, I mean, how about gradient? Because saturation function have that uh, vanishing gradient issue, right? But uh, as I said, like uh, in other, most of the issue comes. I mean, when we say in the other the, the unstable gradient, I mean, I mean, what the unstable gradient in other actually refer normally refer to exploding gradient because like uh, you know, so it, it it somehow like uh, I mean in especially in long uh, sequence training, okay, uh, um, the I mean either gradient or like uh, the the result function gets Enlarge and enlarge, okay. Eventually, great I and mean, explode, okay. But uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. For saturation function, I mean, if you have that uh, vanish gradient problem, we already know a lot of technique to fight with that. We already know a lot of techniques, okay. Especially the ones that we learned from the chapter eleven. I mean, they are still okay. Okay, another way. Okay, um, yeah, the gradient, that's it, okay, it's pro too, okay. So if you notice that training is unstable, most of, like, most of the case is because of the exploding gradient, okay. So you may want to monitor the size of the gradient, okay. And uh, how do we monitor the size of the gradient? I mean, we, we talk about TensorFlow, right? TensorFlow is able to, uh, is, uh, is, I mean, allows you to monitor the, the gradient, like, uh, you know, uh, during training, okay? And uh, if that happens, you can also use uh, uh, gradient clipping. We talk about gradient clipping in chapter 11, right? Okay, which uh, help you to prevent uh, uh, gradient, uh, I mean, exploring gradient as well, okay? So, yeah. And uh, remember, like uh, in chapter eleven, I mentioned like the batch normalization is uh, is important technique, right? I mean, this is so important that in chapter uh, twelve, I mean, when we talk about CMN, um, I mean, you see batch normalization. I mean, always is always used like right after the convolutional layer. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, how about in other? Yes, we can still use batch normalization, but uh, you know, uh, there's some research that uh, you know they found out that BN was slightly beneficial only when it was applied to the input, not to the hidden layer, hidden state. Okay, so. Because I know if you try to apply batch normalization directly, then it will apply to both the input and the hidden state. Because hidden state is also considered 
I mean, that's, that's the feedback, remember? I mean, that's also considered as the input of the neural, okay? So in other words, okay, uh, uh, you know, it was slightly better than nothing when applied between recurrent layers, okay? Um, well, but not within recurrent layer, okay? So, uh, um, um, so basically, okay, uh, uh, in keras, okay, this can be done by adding a batch normalization layer before each recurrent layer. But, but the, the issue is, yeah, I mean, the batch normalization, uh, uh, you don't, you, you will not, you cannot expect the BF help you a lot. It's not like uh, uh, convolutional neural network or, uh, I mean, you know, the other case is like uh, uh, BF help a lot. Okay, I mean, instead, instead, if you don't, if you say the operational organization doesn't help that much, what, what else, what other option do we have? Okay, there's a concept called layer normalization, okay, which was uh, proposed uh, in a 2016 paper. Okay, this concept, <coughs> I'm sorry, is similar to batch normalization, but instead of normalizing across batch dimension, it normalizes across feature dimension. Okay, so it normalizes your features. Okay, I mean each, I mean based on the, I mean different features. Okay, so the the advantage of this is that I mean it can compute the required statistics on the fly at each time step. So I mean. You, you don't need to remember, like uh, in the batch normalization, if you still remember uh, uh, our discussion, I mean, in chapter 11, you will know that batch normalization uh, during training and uh, during inference act differently. Remember? Because during training, I mean, you have the batch, right? So you get the low statistics from each batch easily. But uh, during inference, because you you may not have that batch concept, right? So you actually have to, you know, uh, 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 estimate like uh, those like, uh, you know, uh, uh, statistics, okay? Um, from, I mean, I mean, during the, the mini batch, from the mini batch, uh, 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 I mean, training, I mean, uh, process, okay? Uh, and they use that in the, in the, in the, um, in the uh, inference. Um, so, but the, the layer normalization, okay, I mean, it, it remains the same, okay, regardless if it's like, uh, you know, you are doing training or you are doing inference, okay, so it's a much easier, uh, you know, process, okay. So normalization will learn, scale, and offset parameter for each input, okay, directly, and uh, in other, it is typically used right after linear combination and the before and, and the hidden state and the before the activation function is applied. So um, so we can I mean uh, we can implement like a layer of normalization in carrots, okay, with a simple memory cell, okay? So the this is an example, okay? Class layer normalization simple RNN cell. Okay, it is a it subclass the layer. Okay, and the here, okay, uh, um, um, th these are I mean, pretty much I mean, I mean very very easy. Okay, so um, we, we don't need to change that much. The only thing we add is here. We in, we create this keras star layers layer normalization. Okay, but uh, remember, I mean, we don't specify their relations like uh, in here. We specify their relation actually in the core method. So here, okay, you can see that, okay, we first compute the output, okay? 
first. And then, okay, we apply the layer normalization to this output. Okay, oh, by the way, the output new states, I mean, they are the same, I mean, because it's a, it's a simple island cell. We know that, right? And the, 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 the output and the, the state are the same. So then we, we apply the layer normalization first before we apply the activation function. Okay? And then we just output the same thing twice. The first one is uh, used as a output. The second one is used as a uh, state. The state is actually uh, a list because, I mean, you know, in general, I mean, the iron cell can have more than one state. Okay, so that is why when it is like a, a list instead of just one value. Okay? So, um, yeah, I, I think I already explained like what this code is. So, um, yeah, not much to explain here. And then you can use this uh, LN simple iron cell to create model like this. Model, okay, still use sequential API. So in the layers, RN, okay, you use the LN as simple RN cell, okay, to create like uh, um, 20, uh, uh, Yeah, this is a simple iron cell. Yeah, this is simple iron cell, and we use that to create. I mean, to create a simple iron cell with the layer normalization. Okay, we have twenty uh, iron uh, simple iron cell with the layer normalization, and uh, the other parts remains the same. Okay, we also we apply this LNS LN simple iron cell. Okay, and uh, the other part. So so up to now, okay. Um, this is like a one technique you could use, okay, to improve the training and the fight with the, the exploding gradient in other, okay. So well, let's take 10 minutes break. When we come back, we will continue our discussion on the other technique that help you to train other. Okay. Um, There's a small, uh, uh, um, you know, uh, thing I would like to mention is about the final exam, the final project, okay? Uh, in this class, I normally do the final exam, okay, a week earlier than the final exam week, okay? And uh, I will have the, I will hold the final project report in the final exam week, okay? So, um, because I kind of feel like uh, if I don't give you an exam, you no, know, before the presentation, nobody will be, will concentrate on the presentation anyway, okay? So, um, so the exam is actually given one week earlier than the, the exam week, okay? And the final project will be the, in the last week of the, um, well, the, the, the exam week, okay? And uh, um, the final project due date will be another week, okay, after the final exam week, okay? So this is how this course is uh, organized, okay? So in some sense, okay, I mean, if you look at the syllabus, well, uh, well, I, I didn't put it in the syllabus, but if you look at like uh, the online information of this course, you will see like, uh, because you, you guys know like uh, we, uh, our school has, is, uh, has like uh, transformed from 16 weeks, sorry, 18 weeks, right? To 16 weeks, right? So, um, so, uh, to be honest, like, uh, um, um, 
if you consider the final uh, presentation and the presentation report, okay, actually uh, this course will run into like uh, about 17 weeks, 17 weeks, okay. Not exactly 18 weeks, not exactly 16 weeks, but somewhere in the middle, okay. I, um, um, but uh, 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 because I s also submitted the two papers to two different conferences, like uh, 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 um, which will be held like in the middle of the semester. If the paper was will be accepted, then I may uh, need to um, you know um, find the time to do the makeup. Okay, either I do that or I move the schedule like uh, like uh, into like uh, those like uh, two additional weeks. I mean, the, 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 the school call it like a like a flexible time for the, the, the instructor to use, okay? So I can, in case if I, you know, if I have to go to a conference, okay? If I have to miss like a, um, a lecture, I, 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 I would let you know, okay? So, okay. Any question for the grading policy here? No? Okay, this is the part that we will stick with, okay? Um, basically, um, um, as you see, um, each part, okay, plays important roles. The written assignment, final exam, Final project, okay. So um, uh, be careful, okay. But it, of course, if you make a mistake in the uh, 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 homework, okay, you have um, you know you only need to get a three good grade from four homeworks, okay. So um, if you make small mistakes, I mean that, that's not going to uh, affect you, okay. And then it's a uh, academic misconduct policy, okay? So I, I wrote a lot of things there, but uh, um, basically the, the only thing I want to tell you is that uh, don't cheat, okay? Don't cheat, okay? I mean, you guys are, are adults, so you know like uh, what, what does it mean by cheating, right? So, um, I, I do encourage discussion, okay, uh, uh, because most of my, the classes I'm teaching, okay, um, like uh, have some like, uh, um, like a project or like a, uh, the project, by the way, is, a, is a also a team project, okay. You guys will have to form a team of like maybe two to three students. Uh, uh, for for each team, okay. So 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 of course, like uh, in 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 this class, I encourage you guys for discussion. However, discussion, okay, happens, you know, before you write your own homework, before you take the exam, of course, right? If you copy the homework from your uh, friend, okay, that's considered cheap cheating, okay, so, uh, which is not allowed, okay, just want you guys to be aware, okay. So, um, yeah, the fine line between cheating and, uh, co I mean, discussion, I, I think, like, uh, you guys know better, okay, I mean, you guys are adults, anyway. So, the last item, okay, uh, uh, before we talk about the topics, okay, is the disappear disabilities, okay? Um, if for any reason you need special assistance, okay, please talk to me before the deadline or before the exam, okay? Okay, such as uh, for sickness or, you know, particular reason you need extension, you have to let me know prior to the deadline prior to the deadline. Again, 
you can talk to me, you can email me, you can come. Just, just, just make sure you talk to me before the um, deadline. I, I'm very accommodating, okay? Um, when I used to teach in United States, I mean, uh, there was a student who, 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 is, who cannot take pressure, okay? I mean, so uh, that student asked me, like, uh, okay, um, I couldn't stand for, like, uh, okay, um, you know, for example, like the final exam, I mean, normally I, it's three hours. But she said, like, uh, she, she, had, she cannot stand a limited amount of time to take the exam. She has to take it, like, uh, slowly because of the mental issue, okay? So I said, fine, okay, I, I assigned a TA and, uh, to, and, and I gave her a separate room, okay? And uh, I believe she took like a f more than five hours for that final exam, okay? L even for that, I can accommodate that, okay? So just if you have, ha if you have any, well, um, have any special request, you just, you guys just have to let me know, okay? So that's about it for uh, um, the syllabus. Any questions so far? No? And uh, here I list like uh, um, a list of the subjects that we are we intend to cover. However, this is a very um, um, you know, uh, um, ambitious uh, 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 list of topics because uh, based on my past experience, we can probably cover up to subject six or seven, okay? We, we never, we, we have never reached the inference engine, this part, okay? So, so let's see what uh, happens, because especially uh, because the semester is cut uh, uh, two, two weeks short, so uh, that will also affect the number of topics that we covered in this class. So, well, um, let's see what we can do, okay? I, I don't want to, you know, to speed up my, my, my uh, lecture, okay, just to cover the same amount of material because I don't think that's good for your learning. However, um, uh, with, uh, uh, a, you, know, uh, you know, a shorter semester, I mean, I, I really have trouble, like, estimating, you know, how many topics I can cover. But uh, here I just list this MO, okay? And uh, we'll see what, 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 I mean, what happens later, okay? And uh, I also list the tentative final exam and the project presentation date there. As you can see, the exam date uh, is a week earlier than the project presentation, okay? And, uh, um, Wait, wait, wait. Um, yeah, I think the, the exam date is, uh, yeah. I think the exam date is like uh, the, in the final exam week. A project presentation is like uh, a week after the final exam, okay? So this is actually the, the 17th week, okay? I need to correct myself, okay? I think when I, when I schedule this, I already, you know, assume like uh, at least one of my papers will be accepted or something like that. Okay, but anyway, so this is the tentative schedule. Any, any question? And uh, one uh, important question as well, okay. How many of you have not uh, 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 you know, enrolled in this class yet. How many of you need like passcode? 
Oh, oh quite, okay, thank you. Um, so, those who already got enrolled, actually, you know, uh, not too many showed up today, right? <laughs> okay, okay, that's fine. Okay, so let's um, let, let's de deal with the let, let's take like a a short break, okay? Because like uh, I I I need to deal with the 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 passcode first, and uh, um, you know let so let's take the break. When we come back, okay, um, I have uh, a getting started, jump start, uh, this uh, set of slides that I would like to cover, at least for uh, the first lecture. Okay, I would like to cover that. Okay, so, yeah, so let's uh, take a, a, sh a short break first. Okay, thank you. Um, if you need the like passcode, please, you know, come forward. Um, Okay. Okay, so that's, uh, so you see it's amazing, you know, we have like a 60 student enrolled in this class and I just gave out like a more than 40 passcode and the class is still not full, you know. <laughs> so this is like a magic, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm not, I don't take attendance, but uh, you know, but uh, make sure you, you, you learn something, okay? Otherwise, I mean, I, last night I told this subject, like, uh, I found like uh, some students, they, 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 they don't come to class, that's fine, but they do very poorly in the exam and, uh, and the project, okay? So, so you know, I, I, I don't want to see that happen again. Okay, so I want to let you know that I'm enforcing uh, all these policies. Okay, uh, just so if, if you don't don't you know if you don't come to class, that's fine. We 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 have uh, recorded the lecture, so you can you you are more than welcome to 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 watch the video. Okay, 
at home. Okay, that one I I, I don't care. Okay, because to be honest, I mean when I was uh, a, a student, I I never come to lecture. Okay, I always learn by myself. Okay, that's uh, uh, ability. I mean, uh, I mean, I mean to I mean the self learning is ability that you will be you will appreciate like uh, when you when you you know go to the industry and uh, you know I mean uh, start. Working for like uh, I mean take I mean I mean I mean uh, work for a real job okay so that's uh, an important skill okay so I do think like uh, you know it, it's okay to miss the class but you have you guys have to learn okay it's not like okay I just take this class and assuming okay uh, Doctor Sang is a uh, is a nice guy okay he 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 never never fails student no 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 if you ask like a uh, student who take who took this class like a few years ago I think I failed like quite a few students last time okay so just want you to be aware of that okay so back to uh, the class okay um, yeah because uh, we, 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 we I mean we are cut like uh, two weeks short so I, I do think we, we, we need to have certain some progress for uh, this class, even for the first lecture. I, I understand that you guys just come back from the long break. Uh, you don't want to take, you want to, don't want to stay in the in the classroom. Uh, neither do I. Okay, I don't want to stay in the in the classroom either. But uh, yeah, let's let's get a job done first. Okay, so the first. Uh, set of slides is uh, getting started. It only, only have like about 10 slides, so it's, uh, let, let's try to get it over with very quickly, okay? So, the, this, remember on the syllabus, I list the first book as our textbook, right? But actually, I list another two references here, okay? The reference one is German, Carlin, Stern, Bayesian data analysis, okay, from Chapman and Hall, okay. This CRC textbook, it, it, I mean, is like a considered Bible in this uh, um, in this uh, field, okay. However, however, okay, um, if you're not in uh, uh, com uh, mathematics department, okay, this 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 textbook is. Um, perhaps too dry, okay, too dry and uh, too difficult for you guys. Um, uh, if you want to learn some, uh, 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 you know, subject, like uh, in, in this field, like uh, in more uh, formal way, okay, this is the best book out there, okay, Bayesian Data Analysis, okay, uh, third edition. Be careful, okay. The third edition is, uh, I, I heard like uh, people saying like the uh, second edition is actually better than the third one, but the third edition is the newest one, okay. And the second reference that I put here, okay, is the book I used to use, okay, for this class like a uh, few years uh, ago, okay. As I said, okay, um, you know, most of the Bayesian data analysis books use R. Okay, if you use R, then the JAX and the STEN will be the, you know, uh, uh, um, package to use, okay, to do Bayesian data analysis. This book is actually also, this book also received very good review, but the, the issue uh, is that this book is uh, about this thick, okay. Uh, it is uh, very friendly in the sense that I mean it uh, describes like a concept very clearly, but uh, it is too wordy, okay, too wordy, and uh, um, and the, the the important reason I decide to abandon this book is because it uses R, uh, okay. Uh, I want to find something that is more Python oriented, okay, but. Uh, these two books, however, are good references, okay, for these classes. Actually, like uh, some of the slides, you, I mean, uh, in this class are actually from this uh, this 
this uh, uh, the second reference because I used to teach this class using the second reference, okay, and I found like uh, some ref some uh, um, part of some concepts are actually uh, you know covered like in much more it's mu um, much better in this book than the the current textbook, okay, so. Uh, and again, like uh, uh, you could probably find PDF file for these books like somewhere, but I cannot tell you where. Okay, yeah, okay. So, okay, why do we need to learn Bayesian data analysis? Okay. Um, First, like uh, um, data analysis has a long history. Okay, I mean, in computer science, like uh, 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 we feel like data analysis was like uh, uh, become like a props prosperous. We you, you, we normally call data analysis like uh, data mining in computer science, and we say, oh, com computer science, like uh, we talk about data science, uh, data analysis, data science for about twenty years about 20, less than 30 for sure, okay, about 20 years. Um, but, uh, but if you look at the literature, okay, you will find that data analysis is not uh, a new term, okay. It's, it's been there for maybe 100 years, okay, 100 years, okay, close to 100 at least, like, uh, Okay, because actually the people who work on data analysis uh, are, I mean, used to be like people in the statistics field. Okay, um, uh, you know, uh, Department of Statistics. Okay, uh, about like a, a few decades ago. Okay, they, they, they. I mean, some department. I, I believe it's like a. a um, Georgia Tech, okay? They even consider changing their name to Department of Data Science, okay? So, so, so data analysis is really not like, a, 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 like, a, like a originated from computer science. They come from statistics. And uh, obviously, mm -hmm. like statistics has a long history, okay? Has a long history. And uh, everything you do in statistics is about data science. It's about like uh, analysis of the data anyway. Okay, so um, there are two important trends for data analysis. I mean, when I say data analysis here, I, I, I'm actually referring to statistics. Okay, statistics. Okay, the I mean the first trend like uh, in statistics is from to move from frequentist to Bayesian, okay? So what is frequentist, what is Bayesian, okay? Um, you guys know like uh, probability, right? A little bit, I'm not asking you to do like a very, like a, like a stochastic processing or things like those, like I'm asking you about very simple probability, like uh, when you throw a dice, okay, if uh, it's a fair dice, like uh, each side will come up with a probability one over six, right? Everybody knows that, right? Okay. So, so what we say frequentist means like, uh, okay, we try to understand the probability in the sense that, okay, if I, if I, if I try this uh, event many, many, many times, for example, like if I throw the dice, like a million times, okay, about one over six, okay, uh, out of this million times will be, for example, like a, like a one point, okay? Okay, so they try to understand, they try to rationalize the probability by using like, a, you know, we can, we can do this thing like, a, you know, like uh, a lot of times, and uh, you know, use by using this, um, you know, uh, um, the result, okay, 
and we try to you know like like compute the probability. Okay, this works for some for certain um, um, for certain like uh, 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 um, problems, obviously. However, okay, um, this is not a good uh, way to understand some other event. For example, uh, you guys don't watch the NFL, right? National Football League. Okay. Uh, well, um, what else I can come up with? What is like a like a big event recently? Do we have uh, some big event? Okay, uh, because we we just like uh, uh, have like a uh, we will have like a presidential election like uh, in another year or so, right? Okay, in Taiwan, and we know like uh, you know in Taiwan like everybody talk about politics, right? So, so I will ask you. I mean, somebody will say. What's the chance that uh, KMT will 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 win the election? And somebody will answer, "Oh, I think like uh, very likely, like sixty, like a uh, zero point six, like sixty percent." Okay, I think KMT will win. So this is the probability, right? This is the probability. But can you say, okay, we can? Do this event like a million times, and then sixty percent of time, like uh, KMT will win. Well, we we only vote once, right? Every four years, we only vote once, right? How can you try this event like uh, like uh, many many times? That's not possible, right? That's not possible. Okay, so in some events okay you, you just cannot do it you cannot like uh, you know like uh, like uh, like uh, run this test many many times so 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 like uh, like uh, people in statistics know feel like uh, the, the 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 understanding of the frequentist has a limitation has a limitation. So they move to Bayesian. So you, 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 so you may ask, what is Bayesian? Bayesian, in Bayesian, statistics, I mean, the, the probability is a belief. Is a belief. Okay, so when you say, I believe like uh, the, the um, like a KMT will win the presidential e election, like a uh, like a probability is like a uh, like a uh, sixty percent. Okay, then that's your belief. Okay, that's your belief. Okay, because it's a belief. Okay, or you can say it's a, another way to say it, to to describe it is that's the credibility. You credit, KMT will win this election, like sixty uh, percent. Okay, and this, this first, like, uh, this thinking, okay, I mean, to consider probability as, um, as a belief or to consider probability as a credibility is, is patient, is patient. And this belief, this probability, okay, you, you know, uh, you, you, can, you can say this is a prior. Prior, prior means like uh, okay, your, I mean uh, 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 your estimate before, before you see any any events. Okay, before you see any events, but uh, say like uh, okay, um, um, after a few days, say uh, if KMT pre um, president uh, candidate. Do something stupid. Okay, do something stupid. Like, uh, okay, uh, 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 I don't know. Maybe like, uh, okay, uh, uh, say, oh, we should, we should, we should, uh, like, uh, like, uh, like, uh, surrender to, 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 
to, to China or something like that. Okay. I mean, then obviously your belief will change, right? Okay. Or maybe you, you, you think like we should surrender China. Maybe your belief will also change. Your belief will, be, will raise from 60% to maybe 70%, 80%. But if you don't think this is a right way, and you consider many people think the same way, then your belief that KNT will win this election will reduce, right? Maybe re it, will, it, will, it, will, it will reduce from maybe 60% to maybe 40%, right? So, so this, okay, so the change of this belief, okay, after after the fact, you, I mean, that after you observe certain events, okay, the, the final probability distribution, we call it posterior. So we have a prior. Prior is a probability, actually it's a distribution. Okay, normally we say, oh, I mean, oh, it's a, I mean, it's a spe specific uh, probability, but actually, okay, because the Everything is uncertain. Okay, also, this is also like a, a, a patient thinking. Everything is uncertain. So, it's, uh, uh, because it's uncertain, so we, 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 we normally do not consider something just as a probability. We consider something as a, as a probability distribution. Okay, so originally, okay, your distribution, okay, is centered at 60%. Because you think like a candy will win, but if candy do something stupid, then the probability, the distribution will, will 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 change, right? So that's like, uh, you know. The movement from frequentist to Bayesian. Okay, and uh, uh, in the traditional uh, statistics, they are like, a, for example, like a hypothesis testing. Okay, for example, like uh, if you are into statistics, you will know p-value, like uh, NHST are perhaps like uh, the, the most standard methods, okay, to do data analysis, okay? That's the traditional way, okay? Those, actually NHST is based on p-value, the concept p-value, and uh, all these, like uh, techniques are called hypothesis testing. Okay, the NH actually stands for hypothesis. Okay, no hypothesis. At T stands for the testing. Okay, and uh, and then we will move. Okay, to estimation with uncertainty. As I say, the Bayesian is about uncertainty. Okay, so these two trend actually, you know, uh, it are happening like uh, in statistical field, like uh, especially in the recent 20 years. You say, oh, 20 years is a long time. So this is like uh, the Bayesian data analysis is considered old. In computer science point of view, yeah, 20 years is, is, is quite long. But in statistics, it's, you know, in math field, 20 years is really nothing, okay? It's very short, okay? Actually, it's less than 20. It's about like, uh, yeah, um, yeah, it's about 20, like uh, late 1990s and uh, early 2000. Yeah, so, so anyway, just want you to gui guys to be aware, okay? So uh, in like uh, department statistics, of course, there are still many professors, okay, who are into like a traditional statistics because they were trained because as I said, like, uh, you know, uh, patient data analysis is still considered new stuff in their department. So um, some uh, older professors, okay, still, you know, receive like education from traditional uh, statistical, uh, uh, you know, methods. But uh, the newer, the newer, the, 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 the younger people in statistics, okay, are quite familiarized with the Bayesian data analysis. They, they, they actually move, okay, to Bayesian, move to this estimation with uncertainty, okay? So this is like a important trend and, uh, and um, 
also the reason, okay, we want to study this subject, okay? So, the focus of this book, when I say this book, is about this textbook, okay? Is how to perform Bayesian inferential statistics, okay? So we care about how to perform this uh, Bayesian data analysis, okay? And uh, then how to use EDA. Uh, um, EDA is uh, basically like, uh, you know, like a uh, uh, figure histograms, okay? Basically like a visualized aids to summarize, interpret, check, and uh, communicate results of Bayesian inference. So the, the Bayesian inference, okay, you obtain will be present in a visualized manner, which will be, should be easy to understand, okay? So this is one thing that is sl very different from, uh, for example, like, uh, uh, because I, I also teach deep learning, you know, like uh, uh, I, I, told, I told deep learning last semester, I, I will teach deep learning next semester in case if you want, are interested in this sub subject. But anyway, I mean, in deep learning, um, you know, when you train the model and the model give you an answer, okay, based on the data you feed to, to the model, a lot of time, it doesn't provide a lot of explanation, okay? Uh, uh, some people say, oh, we are developing explainable AI, but uh, most of the time, AI are not explainable, okay? I would say majority of time. Uh, you guys use chat G GPT, right? Like, uh, when you use chat GPT, do you know the inner working of chat GPT? I mean, you may know a little bit about NLP, but uh, still, like, chat GPT is so complicated, like, uh, it's so difficult to really, you know, explain how it works, right? So, but, uh, Bayesian inference is very different, okay? I mean, when you do Bayesian inference, you have all those cues, all those like, uh, you know, visual results that you can show to uh, your, um, you know, your boss, okay? To explain why we make this decision, okay? It's not based on, okay, uh, a black box, okay? Deep learning is kind of like a black box. I mean, you, you, your, bo your boss may not, uh, uh, may not trust that uh, decision-making process, okay, a lot of time. Actually, like, uh, it, it, I, I'm not sure, I mean, if you have uh, 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 experience in working with like uh, outside companies, okay, they would always tell you, okay, uh, I want, um, you to train the model, but at the same time, I want you to train uh, uh, something that is, uh, uh, I, want, I want you to tell me why it works, okay? So, I mean, uh, if you really like, uh, you know, are into like deep learning, you know like, uh, you know, it's difficult to explain. So normally, I mean, when we hear, I mean, I mean this uh, request, we, we, what we normally do is like, we use uh, some other, machine learning methods such as uh, decision tree, those uh, ma model that are easy to explain, okay, as a backup to, to show that, oh, this is decision tree, okay, so the result, okay, okay, um, is this, okay, because of certain features, blah, 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 blah. But uh, if you want to explain the deep learning model, that's, that's the pain in the neck, okay, it's just very difficult, okay? But the patient, it's different. Bayesian inference is different, okay? I mean, it, it's, it's purely, uh, it's totally about explanation, okay? Um, that, that is also the reason, okay? Um, I know if we, I mean, since we guys, most of you guys are in computer science, I mean, so you know, like, uh, we, we know like, oh, we, I mean, uh, uh, we can learn AI, we can, we can do a lot of things with AI. Um, and you are comfortable with all the methods you, 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 re, uh, you learned in computer science. However, okay, uh, say, um, 
after you, you graduate, if you work for like a, like a certain industry, such as, uh, for example, pharmaceutical industry, okay? I mean, you know, pharmaceutical industry is big, okay? Uh, probably not that big in Taiwan, because in Taiwan, like, uh, 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 the politicians, for some reason, they, they, they don't like uh, pharmaceutical companies. But uh, anyway, okay, uh, assuming after you graduate, you, you go out to work for a pharmaceutical company, when they want to decide which medicine is, is uh, more effective, which method do they use? Bayesian data analysis. Okay, or in social science, for example. Okay, in social science. I mean, a lot of time, you don't see computer science technique be carried out in those fields. Instead, you saw, you will see like a, like a Bayesian data analysis being used as a inference tool in the other field. Okay, I'm not, I mean, of course this has to, to do with two reasons. The first one is because, well, even when we say AI, AI is really becoming popular like uh, in recent 10 to less than 20 years, right? So AI is still quite young, to be honest with you. I mean, even compared with spatial data analysis, AI is young, okay? Um, so maybe like uh, an after another um, 20 years, okay, the other industry will, you know, will, will, will Will, will accept AI method much better, okay? Maybe, I don't know. The, the second possible reason is because, as I said, a lot of AI methods lack interpret interpretability, okay? You cannot explain the, the decision making so well, okay? Not as well as statistical methods such as Bayesian data analysis, okay? So, um, yeah, just one you to be aware, okay? So when you, when you work for other industries, okay, uh, not in computer science, okay, then you will see like, uh, you know, patient data analysis be, is uh, much more frequently mentioned, okay? Or like, uh, for example, like uh, in uh, uh, insurance company, okay? You know, the insurance company, they, they have like, uh, um, they need to, you know, dis make decision for certain like a uh, uh, um, you know big investment, okay? Um, I mean they uh, we we know like a, like a, um, people in uh, in I mean recently like a Taiwan uh, insurance company screw up right like because like uh, they 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 assume like uh, Taiwan will never be affected by COVID nineteen, but but uh, so they they sell the the COVID nineteen you know, insurance policy to a lot of people, but, uh, but the situation is, the, obviously their decision is wrong, okay, what's wrong, so, so they, they, they lost a lot of money, okay. But anyway, just want you to understand, okay, the patient data analysis is, uh, is an important tool in many fields, uh, pharmaceutical and uh, insurance company, I mean, all of them, use like a patient data analysis instead of AI math. I'm not saying AI math is bad, but like, uh, but even for now, okay, this industry, this company still use patient data analysis a lot, okay? So for traditional, for traditional statistics course, okay, um, you know, um, you know, they, they, I mean, they basically teach a collection of recipe that more or less like uh, you know they go to the statistical pantry, pick one can, a uh, one tin can, and open it and add data to taste and just stir it until obtain a consistent p value, okay, uh, under zero point zero five. So the main goal, okay, uh, of traditional uh, uh, statistics is to teach you how to pick the proper method, okay, proper case, the proper method, 
Okay, so this approach is not ideal because uh, the most common result, okay, it, uh, is uh, you have you leave a lot of like uh, you know confused people unable to grasp like uh, the concept the, of like a different method. Okay, so this is like um, like a traditional statistics. Uh, uh, the, the issue with the traditional traditional statistics. I mean. Um, in Bayesian data analysis, okay, still you will see, you will learn some recipe or you will learn some methods, okay, but uh, this will be homemade. After I mean, rather than the canned food, okay, what what does that mean? Okay, it means like uh, you have a lot of things to that you can decide, okay, in all the all those methods, okay, um, for example, like uh, the prior, okay, or um, you know. Uh, we will talk about this in detail anyway. So, so we will learn how to mix fresh ingredients, and uh, we'll, you know, suit different like uh, occasions. And uh, more importantly, okay, that will lead you to apply concepts beyond the examples of this book. Okay. So, basically, okay, here, okay, the examples we used, we, 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 you learned you. You, you, you observe in this book, I mean, can be carried over to a lot of, I mean, different uh, questions, different problems, okay? And uh, do we have prerequisite for this class? To be honest, I mean, if you are talking about like a Bayesian data analysis, if, if you use this textbook, the second one, then I will tell you, yeah, we need a lot of like a prior knowledge, okay? But, uh, um, you know, since we are using, we are focusing on how to do the Bayesian data analysis. So, you know, I'm not going to emphasize too much on the theory part. So, you know, the mathematical prerequisite is really not that much, okay? You do need to understand basic algebra and the basic calculus, okay? Things like this. This is not difficult, right? Okay. Or is it? Uh, you know, very simple, like a, like a differentiation in integral. I mean, uh, everybody, uh, hopefully, like you, you learned that well I mean, from your high school and uh, first year, like uh, college, okay? And uh, the algebra that I'm talking about is not college level algebra. I'm talking about uh, high, uh, like a uh, high school algebra. Okay, so so really like uh, uh, not much prerequisite. I mean for this class. Okay, but we do expect. I mean you guys to have basic programming experience. Okay, especially uh, uh, in Python. Okay, in Python. Okay, you need to learn the basics of Python. Okay, because well. We are going to use that, I mean, for this class, okay? Um, a lot of examples are built on top of uh, the Python experience, okay? And uh, because Python is uh, uh, one of the most popular scripting languages, so I suppose, like, uh, you know, you guys uh, have no problem with that. If you, if you don't have background in Python, you do need to pick it up quickly, okay? And uh, in... You know, we know like Python has different version, okay? So we will use Python 3.6 and the PyMC3 and the RVs, okay? Uh, PyMC3 and RVs, these are the two package, okay? Um, that uh, are very, uh, uh, that, that will be used for data analysis, okay? So in for this software, of course, you need to install them, okay? Um, for Python 3.6, okay, uh, or later, okay, if you, if you have a newer version, that should be fine, okay? Um, Python has diff very many different distributions, like PyPy and uh, 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 CPy, you know, but uh, I will recommend Anaconda, okay? The reason to an recommend Anaconda is because like uh, it comes with a lot of like uh, uh, mathematical tool or okay, building, okay, 
and uh, so you can go to this website to download it and uh, install it. Okay. Uh, after you install the Anaconda, okay, in the uh, in the uh, in the uh, in the uh, like uh, prompt, you just type Conda install, okay, to install uh, PyMC3, and also you can use PIP to install RVs, okay, and uh, alternative uh, uh, way is to install uh, to install this net this package is like uh, you download this um, you know. Uh, environment environment file okay called bap.yml and then use a conda environment create okay to to which will automatically install all this uh, uh, package for you okay so basically you need a computer obviously okay uh, but uh, because this course is listed under computer science so I, I think this shouldn't be a surprise to you right Okay, so you, you do need a computer and uh, to customize your environment to for this class. Okay. So, as I said, like uh, uh, um, we do need to talk a little bit about Bayesian, right? In this, in the first class. So, what is Bayesian inference? Okay, the most simple. Description for Bayesian analysis is one sentence. Reallocation of credibility across possibilities. Okay? You understand every word here, right? But it may not be so obviously to you. Let me explain. When we say credibility, remember I told you in Bayesian credibility just like a belief, okay, they are a different way to call probability. Okay, so you can say it's a reallocation of probability. Okay, of course, pos what is possibilities? Possibilities here refers to outcomes. Okay, for different outcomes, okay, I mean, you have different probability, right? So, you try to allocate different probabilities to a uh, uh, different outcome, right? But uh, sometimes you need to reallocate, reallocate your probability to different outcome. Why? Because you observe some, uh, you, you, you learn something new. For example, like the uh, uh, example I just mentioned, okay, I think candy will win, but uh, after you observe some stupid things, I mean, uh, can still be can't he, like uh, you know behavior. You say, oh, I will, I will reallocate, I will reallocate my probability. Okay. So this is really about common sense. Okay. So when you see the floor is wet, okay, an example is like this. If you see, when you see floor is wet, what can you infer? Like uh, like uh, when you go out, okay. And uh, and uh, you see, okay, uh, like today, like uh, uh, today it was was it raining? Uh, not raining, okay. But anyway, like if you see the floor is wet, okay, outside, okay, it could be because of rain, right? Okay, it could be because of the drink spilled. Somebody drink like a coke, coke, and. Uh, you know, accidentally spilled on the on the ground on the floor, and uh, which caused the floor to wet to be wet. Okay, and it could be dog pee, right? You know, we have a lot of dogs in uh, in at NCU, right? Um, I think we have a short shelter dog shelter very near, uh, very close to our department, right? Okay, so those like uh, uh, um very kind people always bring like a dog around, okay, maybe dog pees, okay, that's caused the flow to be wet, okay. So, so what happens? All these A, B, C are possible, you can say they are outcome. Well, well really like, uh, um, when we say outcome, it seems to have like, uh, you know, uh, you are doing something and you have an outcome, right? Okay, so it has like uh, some outcome seems to be come from 
like uh, like after a certain event, okay. But uh, here, okay, it could be, you know, this uh, probably shouldn't use the, the term outcome. We we should use like uh, the cause, right? The cause, okay, because you see the floor is wet. This is the observation, right? So you have several ways to explain that, right? Okay, so so still, okay, you, you have to allocate the probability for these three uh, 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 causes which may cause the floor to be wet, right? If you don't know anything, how do you do? If you don't know anything, what do you do? You say, oh, the simplest way is like, uh, I just like uh, 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 allocate my probability to be one third, one third, one third, right? Okay, one third probability uh, is because of the rain. One third probability because the drink spilled. One third probability because of dog pee, okay? But when you, you know, look at the sky and you found that well the sky is uh is 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 sunny okay today is sunny i mean there's no cloud at all what does that tell you it tells you that the chance for the rain to cause the floor wet it's not very likely, right? Okay, so the chance, the pro or like a probability of this option is going down, right? It's going down. So the probability for the second and the third causes, you know, should increase, right? Because of your observation, because you just look at the sky, right? And this is exactly what I mentioned by reallocation of probability, right? Right? And this is, well, this is obviously a common sense, right? Everybody do that, right? Right? Okay. Everybody, is, I mean, you, you can always estimate, do certain simple estimation, like uh, based on your observations. That's, that's always the case, okay? Um, even if you don't do that, okay, at least you should learn it from, from, from comic books, right? I mean, I assume that you, you guys do, do read comic books? No? No? If you don't read comic books, then you lost like 20% uh, of your like, uh, fun okay, in life, okay? Uh, just kidding, but uh, you know, I, 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 even, even, even for now, I, I, I read comic books right, from time to time. Like, uh, what's that? One Piece. It's, it's out every Friday? Okay. Yeah. So you, you know this sentence, right? When you have eliminated the impossible, whatever remains, however improbable, must be the truth. You know this, right? Okay. For older people, we say, oh, this comes from Sherlock Holmes. Okay. For younger people, they, they say, oh, it comes from uh, uh, right? Okay, because this, this sentence has been mentioned many, many times in the novel and the comic books. And this is also a very, uh, all, pretty much equivalent to this reallocation of credibility across possibility, basically. Okay? Let me use the figure for, to illustrate what we are doing here. Okay. Say we have four possible outcomes for an event. Okay. Uh, um, for, for example, like uh, uh, in an election, in an election, we have four candidates. If we don't know better, we don't know anything better, at the end of election, one of them will win, right? One of them will win. So if I ask you to do an estimate, who will win? 
if you don't know better, then we we'll say, oh, then I will allocate like a one fourth, one fourth, one fourth, one fourth. Okay, the chance of winning the election for each candidate to be one fourth. That's the the most uh, intuitive, most naive um, estimation, anyway, right? Okay, we call this prior. Okay, we call this prior because well, that's probably based on my uh, 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 past experience. Because obviously, I mean, uh, uh, if you are into politics, maybe you will say, "Oh, certain uh, a candidate will have better chance of winning." But if you are not into party politics, then you may say, "Oh, just one force for everyone." Okay, so that's your prior. After you observe certain event, for example, candidate A, you know, do something stupid, then the chance of A to win the exaction is diminished. It's diminished. So because the chance of A to win is diminished, so the chance of B, C, and D to win increase, right? Are increased. Okay? So um, B, C, D now have like one third of the chance to win the election. Okay? So this is the, as I said, this is the posterior. After you observe that A is impossible, A, can you A do something stupid? Right? So the, the probability for every candidate change, right? Not just for candidate A, but for everyone. Okay? And then, okay, this thing will become the prior, okay? in the next observation, okay? So this will become your prior here. And uh, unfortunately, B, well, maybe B like uh, decided to, to withdraw from the candidate, from the exam, from, from the election, withdraw from the election, then B is impossible. So uh, once again, the chance for C and the D to win the election increased, right? From one third to 50%, right? Again, the probability of the outcome are re reallocated, right? Reallocated. So this, w you know, this prior, okay, this is a prior, but uh, after you observe, B is impossible, again, this will become your posterior, okay, posterior. And then you can repeat something similar and eventually, oh, you, you are pretty sure D will win the election because C is eliminated. So this elimination process is exactly just like here. When you have eliminated the impossible, whatever remains, however improbable, must be the truth. Right? So, but this is common sense, right? This is common sense. But uh, in, in, in reality, in reality, okay, uh, the outcome of, ev I mean, the, 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 the the possibilities or outcome, okay, and you know, data are noisy, and uh, you know, and the, because of that, okay, you can see the probability, okay, for each possibility is actually represented in a distribution instead of just uh, a simple probability number. Right? So they are represented by, you know, each, the probability of each outcome is represented by a distribution, probability distribution. Okay? And also, the inferences are also prob probabilistic. Okay? So, for example, okay, when you observe certain things, okay, 
Well, the trends for one for 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 I don't know for an event uh, for a, a, a possibility may reduce, but uh, normally you you will not be re, uh, re I mean you will not be reduced to zero. It will be re it will be reduced to you know something like this. I mean, of course, some other you no know, outcome the probability increase, but um, again. This, all this will be represented by a distribution instead of just a simple number. Okay? So, in this class, you are going to learn how to do this. Okay? That's the basic idea of uh, Bayesian data analysis. Okay? We are going to learn how to do this in this class. Okay? So a key step in Bayesian data analysis is defining the set of possibilities over which credibility is allocated. Let me keep reminding you, these possibilities are either outcome or causes, I mean, you know, of a certain event, okay? So our credibility here, again, refer to probability, okay? So, but the, you know, identifying all the possible outcomes or all the possible causes actually is non-trivial. It's non-trivial. A lot of time, I mean, for example, like, uh, okay, remember the, the floor is wet example. I say, oh, because of the rain, because of the drink spilled, because of the dog pees, okay? It could be other re reason. For example, like uh, somebody is, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, um, you know, water the garden. Okay, you know, somebody like, uh, like, uh, like, uh, you know, or there are obviously many, many possible explanations. Okay, why the floor is wet? Here we just mentioned three, right? But, uh, but, uh, you know to find out all the possible uh, uh, outcomes or like causes for uh, the floor is wet, it's actually non-trivial because like ev for every, uh, I mean, I mean uh, possibility, you basically need to allocate, uh, 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 you know, a certain credibility to it, a certain pro probability distribution to it, okay? So, um, here I'm trying to use a pharmaceutical example, okay? So let's consider example of the blood pressure drug. Oops, Oops. sorry, it's, uh, I, I, I skipped the, the break. I suddenly, re I mean, I mean realize that, uh, sorry. But uh, don't you guys feel like a strange, like a, like a, I mean, we, we, do you hear like a, like a bell, bell ring? I mean, I think like uh, starting from this semester, the, the bell is not ringing for some reason. Okay, I, I, at least I, I didn't hear that, yeah. L let me finish this. I mean, this is the last slide for this, uh, for, for, for today, okay. I mean, for this uh, introduction, okay, quick in introduction, okay. So, so, so consider, okay, this example for the blood pressure drug. Okay, in which blood pressures are measured in one group that took the drug and in another group that took the placebo. Do you guys know what placebo is? Anwei ji. Okay, because like, uh, you know, uh, if you don't give drug to, 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 to patient, patient will feel like uh, they, are, they are abandoned. Okay, so they, because of the, this pressure, I mean, they will affect their, you know, uh, vital signs, okay? So when they do, uh, in pharmaceutical com companies, when they do ex experiments, they will give placebo, okay, to, uh, to the patient. I mean, uh, um, you know, um, uh, in case if they don't need anything, okay? Uh, and the, no, no patient knows which, which, which pill is drug, which pill is placeable, okay? 
this will not be revealed until uh, uh, at the end of uh, uh, analysis. Okay, we call it jie mang, jie mang. Okay, remember like a uh, um, uh, the academic Sinica, uh, um, um What's the name of that guy? Um, Wong Wong Smo. There's a quite famous uh, uh, guy who 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 developed a drug. I mean, and uh, the I mean the experiment result was was a failure. But uh, you know they didn't know that until you know the result was revealed. Okay. But anyway, okay. Let's use uh, this class as example. Okay. Assume you guys are all have proper, like a, all have high blood pressure problem. Okay, and uh, then okay, maybe you no, know, I separate people from, I mean, I don't know, I don't know, at here. Okay, the the students on my right hand side will take the real drug for blood pressure. The student from my on my left hand side will take the press ball. Okay? And then, okay, after um, say half a year, oops, sorry, after half a year, if like uh, um, after half a year, like uh, I, I try to, you know, the the, the doctor diagnosed every 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 one of you again. And they, the doctor find out, well, um, um, about 10 students in this group improve the blood pressure problem uh, uh, is like uh, reduced. Okay, but when the doctor examined this placebo group, they found that, okay, five of them blood pressure problem was alleviated. So here I say like a 10. This is this group we have 5, right? So you know how much differences between these two groups will be considered the drug is effective. If you just based on okay whether or not they will be People, there will be, uh, you know, people who get improved, okay, based on the, you know, I mean, the, 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 the drug or placebo, like uh, in two groups. I mean, both groups have people whose situation are not improving, okay? Both groups have people whose situation improves. So, so what do you do? How do you analyze that? Okay, this is like a, a very classical problem, okay, for Bayesian data analysis. And this, is, this also happens to be like, a, you know, the, um, the area that Bayesian data analysis gets used the most. Okay, so in this class, our goal is to assess which possible descriptions, which possible descriptions are more credible or less credible? Okay, using the Bayesian data analysis, we are able to answer. Okay, uh, uh, so there, are, there there's a there's a possible description like uh, okay, um, the drug, the blood pressure drug, is effective. This statement is 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 credible. Or not, we can ask them, we can evaluate that based on the Bayesian data analysis. Okay, so this is important. Okay, uh, and uh, what you guys will be learn from this class. Okay, so that's about it for today. Yeah, I mean, I'm sorry that uh, I didn't uh, stop for the the, the break, but uh, yeah, I think like uh, like uh, it's a. Um, it's a, a, a appropriate like uh, to to stop here, okay, and we will continue our lecture next week.
Any question? If no question, I will see you guys next week. Okay?